it's, 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 it's a nasty game now, really, really nasty game. The banter's faded and it's been replaced with a real, a real nasty edge to it, I think, over the last 20 years. It's not just the sport, it's not just the club, it's not like it's not something you turn up to on a weekly basis, it, it's borderline of religion. Rivalry with Everton is, it's a strange one. It, it's, I think it is our, it's definitely our biggest one. I mean, if you live within the city, the city limits, there's no doubt in your mind that it's the biggest rivalry that you could possibly have because the simple fact of the matter is you've all, everyone's got, if you've not got an Evertonian mate, you've got an Evertonian brother-in-law or, or one, or your, or your brother might. I mean, my, my co, co presenter his brother's an Evertonian and they, so they've grown up with that. You know, it's not just, it's not just within the city. It's sometimes within the four walls of your own house. Yeah, it's vicious now. It's horrible. It's probably the only football game, probably apart from Celtic and Rangers, which has got worse as like hooliganism has been on a decline, whereas Everton Liverpool's gone exactly the opposite way. It's bizarre, absolutely bizarre. When we was going when we were young lads, you know, Everton and Liverpool used to it's a bit of a myth they were all best mates and there was never any fighting, but you did used to go away to games with them and you'd you know, you'd join up on certain home games in the seventies and you know, basically anyone who was not ever not Liverpool, they would be obviously ambushed by the both gangs. It was it was so bad. It was it's almost become a cliche as to how how bad it was during the eighties. Everyone's heard the tales. Everyone knows someone who was who was one of those one of those fellas who wasn't to be were to be trifled with back in back in the day. Uh, and it definitely still exists. Let's 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 be clear. You know, the, every club still has the as the crews. Whether it's you know whether it's the um, the Urchins for Liverpool or it's the the OCS for for Sheffield Wednesday or um, or the BBC for for Sheffield United. Um, there are still people who, who, who have that identity and they do they go to football to seek out trouble. I think less so. I think it's it's far more prevalent in the lower leagues of football than it is in the Premier League because, I mean, maybe that's what had a negative impact on atmosphere, but it's become far more of a family game. It's more of a, a spectacle football at a Premier League level. It's more something that you, 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 know, you get your day trip as people come to take in a game. You know, it's almost like going to the theatre for some people. I think in general it was the 80s was the peak because it was more widespread but for I say myself and when it hit a peak of like organised nastiness it was the 90s you know because towards the end of the 80s and all the rave scene and everybody kind of jacked it in all the hangers on and knows that you should just come for the big day out and they left it then to the ones who were probably you know I'd look on myself as who were like into it for all the wrong reasons you know and the 90s mid 90s were probably the peak of it for, for a lot of people but I say that's not necessarily numbers and wants on rampaging that would be for like football organism as it's probably portrayed nowadays with the films and that you see you know yeah I think like in the 70s it was probably just teenage rampaging 80s it was a little bit yeah, you know, kind of started getting organised. Fuck off. Sneaky fucking machines! The police approach has certainly changed. I think the fact is in the 80s they treated you like animals. You know, and I mean, look, I could, I could, I could talk all day about the the inadequacies in service provided by the South Yorkshire Police in, in, in you know in nineteen eighty nine. Um, but that was it. You know, back in the day, uh, Liverpool fans, football fans in general, were just treated like you know animals, herded into pens. Yeah, the police have definitely got on top of it now. But not just the police. I mean, I think Britain's got more CCTV cameras than anywhere in the world, and they per square, well, around it like per square yard, isn't it? Um, CCTV, intelligence, the police, and the bit, I mean, they've got to take a bit of credit for getting rid of it, but at the end of the day, a lot of people have grown out of it, and 
there's a lot of other things to do now, isn't it? It'll c continue to perpetuate itself because you've got kids teaching the lads that this is how you think of Liverpool, that we hate Liverpool. I don't think that's the way it should be. I'm worried that another 20 years down the line, there'll be no one left who genuinely remembers that it was meant to be a bit of a, a friendly derby, as, as you said. Yeah, it's gone the full circle. It's gone from being a kind of game where, I can say, I don't believe in all the friendliness bollocks where you were all best mates and if you won or you lost, you shook hands and kissed each other. It, it was never like that, but it certainly wasn't the case now where it's you, you can't actually go in each other's pubs or sit in each other's seats because you know it, it, it's such a, a hated game now yeah